very first sermon, 2013, if you can read that, I have, I have, I, I'm old-fashioned. I have stuff in my phone, but it, it, ain't, it ain't a sermon until it's in a, in a book and they're stacked up about that high. So 2013, my 2013 sermon book, I went back to that. I made my notes on here, and I wanted you to know this is what happened. To, in, in, in the late morning hours of, of Wednesday, May 8th, 2013, Tina and I, we got up that morning and we had been in such a dark place trying to find, uh, uh, trying to get somebody to get on board with us to say that, hey, you know, these people would be a good pastor for a church. You know, we had been on staff for a long time. And these people, I think we could put them on board and get them and get them going, but nobody was nobody was buying. Nobody was buying in. You know, when somebody's not buying in and when and, and when the world seems like you're at your darkest point, it's maybe because God is moving us to where he wants us to be. At that time I thought it was terrible, but I didn't know God was moving us to Christ Point Church. On May eighth, two thousand thirteen, we came in and we set up a meeting and I had laid a, a fleece before the Lord, so to speak, and I had said, Lord, if they call me again, Al and I had talked earlier, uh, about five months earlier, and my deal was not that I called them. If they call me again, I think you're starting to write this pretty clear on the board. If they call me again, we're going to talk. So that's the fleece I laid before the Lord. I told the Lord that week. Tina got in the truck with me. We took out to, to, to Mount Juliet to do a job. And I told her it was raining torrentially that day. And I told Tina, I said, this is what I'm telling the Lord. Either fire me or put me to work. That's exactly what I said. This, this next week, May 8, 2013, or actually two weeks later, May 8, 2013, we met right back here. We talked for a few hours. We met around a table like this. We sat around, and I'll never forget, I got up that morning, and I, I was thinking about a friend of mine that we went to school with, and that he, went, he got a good scholarship to play football at Vanderbilt, and everybody just knew he would go to UT, and he didn't. And he came back, and he said, well, everybody's like, why didn't you go to UT? And he said, the reason I didn't go to UT is because Vanderbilt wanted me. Vanderbilt looked at me and said, this is what you can, oops, what happened? Compost happens. It's, it's going down up here. But anyway, wardrobe malfunction. But this, this, he said, Vanderbilt looked at me and said, we need you. Miss Grace, I, I didn't know Miss Grace at the time. She patted me on my leg and said, we need you. I, God put a, a story in my, in my heart that I hadn't thought of in 30 years. And then a, one of the finest ladies I ever met tapped me on the leg and said, we need you. We need you on board. May 12, 2013, we stepped in to pastor it at what was then called the Rock Community Church. The sign had blown off the front of the building. Put a big gash on the, on the wall. Sign had blown off, and for, for several days it was kind of in, in the way in there. And, and I remember we just kind of moved it out of the way and didn't know what we were going to do with it. it uh, on the first meeting of June 2013, we decided to change the name, and Christ Point Church officially began. In June of 2013, we officially began as Christ Point Church. God had given me a word months earlier. Months earlier, God had given me a word for this church. I didn't know it, but he had given me a word. He had given me a word for us, not for, the, not for this body, not for these people, but for us. And I didn't know it was for us. I had been preaching out of this, out of this, uh, this book for a little while. I had went to a couple of churches. I had spoke a couple of times. But God took me to a totally different place, and it is Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. I want you to read it with me. Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Then I said to them, you see the trouble we're in. How Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned. Come let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer suffer, suffer derision. And I told them of the hand of my God that had been upon me for good and also of the words that the king had spoken to me and this is what I want to key in on. And they said, there is a good spirit of they say. And they said, let us rise up and let us build so that we can together strengthen our hands for this good work. Let us do this. Now I want you to notice something with me in verse 17. Nehemiah didn't present that in a question form. The first thing we want to do is look at that. And when you read, you see the trouble we are in. 
you re- automatically want to go to a question. He didn't form that as a question. That wasn't a question. In other words, he didn't walk in and said, do you see what is happening? He didn't walk in and say, did you see the trouble we are in? He walked in and he, he took a survey and he came back and he said, you see. You see the trouble we're in. He made a statement. He said, you see it and I see it. You see it and I see it. See, at that particular time in 2013, Tina and I were shepherds in search of a flock. We didn't, we didn't know what, what, we had a visual of the flock, but we didn't know where that flock was. Didn't know if it was in, if it was in Florida, if it was on the beaches of the Caribbean. We prayed that a lot. Uh, <laughs> we was willing to go do missionary work, Hawaii, Caribbean, it doesn't matter. But, uh, but we, were, we were a shepherd in search of a flock. This church was a flock in search, in search of a shepherd, and we lived two miles away. We didn't know this. We didn't know this, and we had, we had ignored it, to be quite honest. But God had chosen and appointed for us to be together for such a time as this, and we both saw it. We sat around that table, and we both saw it. We saw the shape that we were in. We saw the church was suffering. Steve and Tina were suffering. We saw the shape we were in. So this is what Nehemiah said. Two statements I want to key in on in verse 17 and verse 18. Nehemiah, number one, Nehemiah said, let us rebuild. Nehemiah didn't say, I'm not bringing in people from from, from Susa. He could have brought a crew in. He could have brought everybody that he needed with the king's authority. He didn't say, I'm bringing people in to do the work while you watch them. He said, let us rebuild. We sat at that table and we come together and we said, let us build. Let us build. And the response, the second thing I want to point out, the people said, let us. Let us start building. Nehemiah said, let us get to work. And it's not good enough. I'm going to tell you, the pastor can say, let us get to work over and over and over till he's blue in the face and his hair's gray. And if the church don't say, let us get on board, it's not going to happen. We can say all day long, let us do this. But if we don't, if us don't get on board, then we're, we're dead in the water. They said, let us do this. This is what they said. This is the good spirit of they say. They said, let us get on board. We're all in. So, I, want, I asked Josh. Josh will be in the 11 a.m. service. I asked Josh. They, they moved to, to Chattanooga and we invited them up. I asked Josh. I said, Josh, <laughs> whew, that's kind of hard to say. Josh, how close was this church to closing the doors? One day we were just talking. He said a week. The church was a week from closing the doors. And I looked at Josh and I said, Josh, we were past that from quitting. We were past that from quitting. We, 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 we had already quit way before a week from, 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 from the finish date. We were, we were done. We had been done. We said, Lord, I'm done. I'm finished. But God said, no, I've got a different plan. You're just not seeing it like I'm seeing it. See, I want you to know, my notes from 2013, I want to read them to you. My notes from 2013 simply said, God hasn't given up on you God hasn't given up on you number two the note number two God hasn't given up on this church God hasn't given up on you God hasn't given up on your dreams God hasn't given up on your visions God hasn't given up on your church and you know what I didn't realize the whole time I was doing this God hasn't given up on you God hasn't given up on your dreams God hasn't given up on your church and this is what my last my third statement God hasn't given up on us God hasn't given up on us. We, all of a sudden, became one. All of a sudden, we came together. You know what? The thing is, is this is what I said earlier. I want to brag on what God has done. We bring something to the table. God said, let us come on in and start building. And we said, let us start this building. Let us get, to go, let, let us get together. Nehemiah, I want to go back and paint a picture of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was grieved at the state of Jerusalem. He was grieved. The word said he grieved at this. They were looked upon as weak. They were looked upon as washed up. They were looked upon as insignificant and vulnerable. I'm going to tell you something. I want you to keep this close to your heart. The church should never be looked upon as weak. Ever, ever, ever. The church should never be looked upon as weak. And I'm going to tell you why. 
The world can look at a home, and that home is weak. The world can look at a neighborhood, that neighborhood is weak. But the church has the power of my almighty Jesus, and we should never be looked upon as weak. And I'm going to tell you why we do. Why the churches in America, and some of us in some forms or fashions, are looked upon as weak, it's because we are in the way. God says, look, this is not the way I work. We get ourselves in the way, and it weakens what God can do. The church should never be looked upon as weak. The church should never be in such a state that it is considered insignificant. God's instruments should always be sharp. Always be sharp. Sometimes, all we need is a little encouragement. If you want to know what that looks like, go on a diet. Step on that scale next week, and if you haven't lost anything, you get no encouragement. So, you know what? If you go three weeks on a diet and you've not lost any weight, you're going to quit. That's just all there is to it. You know what your mentality is going to be? I can eat hot dogs, hamburgers, and cake and, 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 and get the same result. So, you know what? You need some encouragement. We need, some, we need somebody that walks up to us and says, stay the course. We need somebody that walks up to us and says, God's not finished with you yet. We need somebody to get on board and, and to give us some encouragement. And before that May 8th meeting, the encouragement came in the way of an older man and an older woman that was retired. Their names were Vicki and Norm Hanson. And you think, how in the world does God work in the way he does? Well, let me explain to you. Vicki told me she was sitting in a church in Crossville, Tennessee. She said, I was sitting in service and God just spoke to me as plain as he could speak to me. said, get up, leave here. Go down to Sparta, what was then called the Rock, and pay your tithes there. That's what God told her. She came in, they pulled in, they were meeting right out in the foyer right here. The whole church was around a table that looked like that. And they were meeting out here, and they pulled up, and Al Grebel went out and met them, and she said, God told me to come here and pay my tithes. We, they needed some encouragement. Al said, you need to come in. She said, no, we're not coming in. Al said, yes, you are. I don't know what happened after that. I just know there was, there, there was a, because if you've ever talked to Vicky and talked to Al, you're going to get some little bit of a head button going on there but because they're, they're both lovable and stubborn. So the thing is, as Al said, look, yeah, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to quote the, the remnant. We needed way more than $280. That's what she paid. She brought her tithe. We need thousands of dollars. And somebody brought $280 and paid their tithe on the sidewalk outside and said, God sent me. That's the encouragement that we needed. It wasn't going to pay any bills off. It wasn't going to pay anything. The phone bill was still late. The electric bill was still, get, uh, was still clicking up uh, uh, mega whatevers. And, and everything was going on. Everything was still accruing. Payments were still being, be, being responsible for. But $280 wouldn't touch it. But you know what? Somebody brought $280 and changed the course of this church. Somebody brought in and said, look, hey, I'm, I, I get it. I get the vision, and I want to encourage you. And they stayed at this church until they moved to Florida with, their, with, their, with their, their children. Nehemiah and the people of Israel faced obstacles, great obstacles. I would describe it as great obstacles and great persecutions. It would have been easier to give up and to quit. It would have been easier to go back to captivity. That's what it had been easier to do. See, the, de the devil recognizes recognized their potential way before anybody else or themselves ever recognized it. See, I think the devil recognized the potential of this church way before anybody else recognized it. I think sometimes when you're sitting around and you're looking at everything falling apart around you, including me and Tina, and you think de uh, the Lord can't use me, it's the what the devil wants you to think. The devil recognizes potential before anybody else does. He fights hardest where he fears most. I'm telling you, he fights hardest where he fears most. People would tell six and seven and eight, maybe ten people back in 2013 the same thing. Give up, just quit. Just quit. You'll never make this church go. You'll never be able to revive what is destroyed already. It can't, it's got too many strikes against it. There are too many obstacles. There are too many. But there was a remnant of people, and I'd like to ask you guys to stand. That remnant of people that met Tina and I at that desk back there, or at that table. 
I'd like to ask you to stay. If you was, if you was in that group that met us back there, I want you to look at that, that, that crew. There's, uh, there's, there's two in the back in the, in, the, in the booth. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right back there we met, including the Wiggins. We met around that table. Thank you, guys. This is what I want you to know. I want you to know, thank you. Thank you for being, uh, thank you for not listening to, to the voices. Thank you for not listening to the voices. Thank you for staying the course. Thank you for believing in the vision, even though you couldn't see anything. See, that's, that's what it takes. It takes somebody believing, even though we can't see. Now, I want to ask you, if you was a part of the church before, I want to ask you to stand. If you was part of that church before 2000, and, or May of 2013, if you was a part of that, I want to ask you to stand. So there's, there should be all of those people. These are the people that hung in there. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, some of our folks came back. Some of our folks came back. You know, the Nehemiah model was simple. It was simple. The Nehemiah model was simple. We needed a team. That's what Nehemiah walked in and he said, look, I don't need anybody from the capital of Susa. I don't need anybody like that. I don't need any skilled laborers. All I need is a team. But you don't understand, I don't know how to lay blocks. Well, I don't either. But we're getting ready to find out. All I need is a team. That Nehemiah model was simple. I need all hands on deck. I need all hands on deck. And Tina and I came in here, and we didn't know whether we was washing or hanging out in the morning. Anybody else did. But we called some people. We called some people and we said, look, you've asked us if we landed, if, if our feet hit the ground anywhere, to let us know. Those people were the Evanses and the Wacklewicks and, 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 and my mom and Andre. And forgive me if I'm missing anybody. But I want, you to, I want to ask you this, this question. If you was in that first service on May 12th, 2013, I want to ask you to stand. That first service, May 2000, well, Kayla Emerton, I left Kayla out. Kayla and, and those guys. Look, right there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That was our church that morning. That, oh, there's my mom and Andre. They didn't stand. Mom and Andre, see, you have to listen. My, my, hey, Mom, this is not a time to take a nap. We'll take naps during this time. Just forgive her. Forgive her. That's my mama. But anyway, anyway. These are the people that said, no, we're going to wait till you end up somewhere, and that's where we're going to go. And I want you to know, every one of those people are still here. Every one of them are still working. Every one of them are diligent. Thank you for catching the vision. Thank you, because let me tell you something. I, I'm going to speak from the remnant side. I don't know what it was like to be them, but I'm going to speak from the remnant side and say this. When you came in, it encouraged us. When you walked in, those, those 16 people that morning, Tina and myself and, and, and a handful of other people, don't think that that didn't encourage them. We see hope now. We see hope. We see we can, we can th th there's, 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 there's a vision, and we can start seeing the light shining upon it. Thank you for joining and staying on the team. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy is, was and still is. She's over our women's ministry. Uh, uh, everybody else, Kayla works hard in here. Uh, Sparky and Dorcas are our are, are, uh, 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 small group uh, facilitators. I mean, it just keeps on, it keeps on, it keeps on. Mom and Andre are part of that. So I want you to know, the table that we met back there on that, the, uh, on that first Wednesday night, we met right there where, where, where that section is. That's the table. Well, it was like that one. There's the table. Our entire adult class met around this table. Our entire adult class on Wednesday night, uh, 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 two, three Wednesday nights ago, there's 161 in attendance. Uh, around that one class, the entire adult class met around that table. The entire church fit around that table. So I want you to know, I'm telling you what God can do when people say, let us get on board and get to building. This is what God can do. I want to show you. Marvin and Linda, amen. There's a, there, there's, there's a couple, and their names are Marvin and Linda. They were the first visitors. And who brought them? Dorcas and, 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 and Sparky. Week two, you walk in, and there's a new couple. There's a new man and a new woman that are here, and you're like, wow, this is awesome. Visitors so quickly. That, those people are still here. She's, she's in that office 24, almost all the time. 
She works here all the time. We don't know how to do anything without Linda. Linda is so important for us. Marvin and Linda were the first visitors. We needed encouragement. We needed somebody to encourage us, somebody to show up. Uh, Mike met me back at the door when the first Sunday that we were over 100. Mike met me at the door and said, let me give you one to go on. He said, this time last year we had eight. Uh, Mike's like me. He'll remember things. So it helps to be able to be encouraged. I want I wanted to give you some, some, some breakdowns so you'll know. Our first monthly average tithe and offering in May of 2013 was $2,166. We thought that was great. We needed $3,200 plus. But $2,166, we were encouraged. We wasn't that far off the mark. See, uh, that was 2013. Our average monthly tithe and offering last year was $17,583. $15,000 more dollars per month. You, you say, why is that important? Because ministry cost. Ministry cost. Your relationship with the Lord is important. When you tithe and when you give your, your, your tithe and your offerings to the Lord, it is important. It is, it is your relationship. It's not somebody else's. So that's what the value is, is people getting on board. Our monthly average attendance in May of 2013 was 40 people. 40 people. Last month's attendance was 275. But this statistic right here, I want you to remember this and never forget it. To this date, not including today, to this date, there are 333 people who have given their hearts to the Lord in Christ Point services. 333. So why, does, why, why is it important for me to be able to give my time and my dollars? Because 333 people wouldn't know possibly wouldn't have a relationship with the Lord. And there are a lot of us sitting in this room right now that I raised my hand during those services. I was a part of the, I remember raising my hand. I remember praying right here. I remember it, and now you're back there working, you're in here working, you're over there working. It's because you're part of that 333, and that's why we do what we do. Divine healings. Miss Rosie is an example of that this week. I'm going to tell you, we prayed right around her about three years ago, somewhere in that neighborhood, right back there. I remember the heat from the anointing was so intense. I remember that. I remember sneaking in, trying to get my hand in there to pray, and I remember just about to fry. She remembers the coolness going through her body. She got up from there. She had to be helped in, and then when she got up, she helped fix, pick up, clean up, and everything else when she was done. So that's the power. I'm telling you, Miss Rosie, I'm going to put you to work. You better be laying hands on people. You've got, you've got something that's, that you've got something that you've got anointing on you that people don't have. And that is to, to, to be able to walk up to somebody and, and they're saying, I'm going through a difficult time. I'm, I'm, I need healing. And when somebody who's been healed several times lays hands up on you, they know how to pray they know how to extend that that anointing into you that's who i want praying for me i want her and them praying for me that's who i want praying for me prayer victories over and over and over prayer three times a week we didn't start out like that prayer every other day here breakthroughs on top of breakthroughs on top of breakthroughs we have rejoiced together in five years and we have cried together in five years we have buried our friends and our husbands and our wives and in, in these past five years. And you know what? We had the, our family, our church to lean upon. And we were, we were stronger because of it. Nehemiah said, come and let us rebuild. He said, come and let us rebuild. Today, we're, or he said, come and let us build. Today, we're not building walls to restore dignity. We're not building walls like Nehemiah did. We're not physically laying bricks. You know what we're building today? We're building lives, and we're restoring hope in Jesus. That's what our job is. That's what our primary job is, and it's not up to us to judge who's, who's qualified and who's not. So I'm going to ask you, what's your story going to be? In five years, what's your story going to be? What's it going to be? Because let me tell you something. Start recording what God has done. It's in, I've got, the, you know, why don't I throw my phones away after they crash? It's because all my notes are in there. I went back on my old phone. I don't, I don't even know how to use it half the time. And I pulled up our, our notes. I pulled up our statistics. 
What's your story going to be? This is what the, you say, well, well, Pastor, you don't understand. My life is a mess. And I'm going to tell you, Jerusalem, the walls were a mess. You say, well, I don't know how to do anything. They didn't know how to lay bricks. They didn't know how to do this. So don't start making excuses why we can't. Let's just start writing our story. Let's start getting the story written. Let's start envisioning what the story looks like. Where am I going to be in five years? You know what? In five years, what's going to, I'm going to, be, I want to, I want the testimonies in this room in five years to be. This is what happened five years ago. I sat in a service at Christ Point Church and we celebrated five years and the pastor brought, brought the story of what had happened and here's my story. Now I serve the Lord. I may serve here, I may serve somewhere else. I want you to serve here. But you know what? I'm on board with what God is doing because of the excitement of, that I saw in the people. I saw the walls go up and I saw it. I want to, I want to tell you, this is how it lays out. We needed a visual. We needed a tangible principle. The Nehemiah principle. We needed something to grab a hold of and say, this is the Nehemiah principle. And the best way to describe it in 2013 was this. The Legos. The Legos. Man, I tell you what, we had Legos everywhere for the first year. Everything was Legos. This is what, this is, th I'm going to give you a, a vision. I'm going to give you a tangible explanation of the vision one lego has eight points man you give these to kids you're going to they're going to disappear for a while i, I could so i'm going to tell you that as a matter of fact that there, there's a, a very popular artist that that has adhd in order to settle them down before they can record songs they give him legos to play with he full grown man uh legos have eight points see if you take two legos just two of these if you take two legos they can connect 24 different ways, 24 different connections. If we take the Lego effect and play, put it into the, to, to, to the Nehemiah principle of working together and teamwork, that means 24 times what I can do by myself. Hello, guys. Pastor Steve here, Christ Point Church, and I really hope you enjoyed the service today. I appreciate you viewing. I would like to invite you personally to be, to be a part of the services at 9 and 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings. We're located on the square in Sparta, Tennessee. So uh, just want to say to you, we're real people, living real lives, serving a real God. Welcome home. Good to see you.